Hi, this is your girl Wilma with Jesus and a Cup of Coffee, and I hope you join me in today as we do study and and we read the Word of God. I hope you got your Bible, the King James Version is what I go with. And behind me is my still my Halloween stuff. It's my autumn stuff. I, I still keeping it up. I don't know why, but <laughs> I just like keeping things up for a little while. Cause it was my birthday. <laughs> okay. Now it was brought to my attention of hope. Hope and grace. So I I had a video already about hope. And uh, I thought I'd do another one to make things plain, and and uh, has a bunch of more scriptures. You know, you might you might want to go with. Uh, so um, you wanted to know about <laughs> where I have hope at? Oh, I'm telling you. Now, I have went through the mill as old as I am, but I have went through a lot of stuff to uh, have to have this hope and to find it it was very easy it was right there in front of me is is where i could found my hope so get your cup of coffee and your bible and let's get right to and study in our word of god okay and it's piping hot guys it's steaming <laughs> Okay, got your steaming hot cup of coffee. Like my sister said, she likes her very hot. Okay. Now, hope. Um, there's a there's meanings in this hope. Um, it's something that you hope for. There's something that you cannot see nor touch until you get the Lord Jesus. You can feel, okay? I try to find hope. We all try to find hope in our parents, our siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, friends. You know what? And even our kids, we try to find hope. You know, we couldn't find that hope, could we? And our children or siblings, you know, can't find hope. I hoped it for peace. I hoped it for uh, love. I hoped it for sa uh, for safety. And number one, what I was hoping for was peace, peace, peace and safety. And uh, I wasn't gonna say this. But I was married once to another guy, and uh, long back in my sin days, I didn't marry, I wasn't a Christian back then, and I married a guy that uh, he, he became the worst drunkard ever was, and um, he would beat me and beat my children and stuff, and uh, I had to get away from that. It was when I was a very, very young girl and didn't understand. Well, I thought that was kind of normal, but the end up, it wasn't, it wasn't normal. I had a lot of people talking to me and stuff. You know, you shouldn't be in that kind of relationship and stuff. Well, that, there, that went the safety and peace. I didn't have no safety nor peace in, the, in people. I didn't have no trust in people. Uh, that one person destroyed my trust in, in everyone, even my own family, my own parents. I, I, I It just messed, messed my mind up about all that uh, torture. It was torture, and I was in danger, and my family was in danger. So I got away from that, that I had help getting away from that, and God put people in my life to get away from that. And uh, he took me out of that situation and and he taught me about hope. See, yeah, I had to be taught by God. I had to have wisdom from from God. And wisdom is, is you learn. You have to learn through a, a many of a spell of a time. You have to learn this hope. You have to learn this peace. Learn where it come from. And uh, 
and it came from Jesus Christ is where my hope came from and uh, where my peace came from you know I didn't even have no hope for tomorrow and I was let, been led down a bad r rocky road um, in sin and I, I went after I went through that mess with the, that husband I, I became uh, separated from Christ it made me even farther and I, the devil was trying to make me believe that there was no hope that there was no peace there was no peace in nothing and and I kept going back to my childhood where my mother and my my dad would teach me about Jesus it all every time I'd get into a mess I'd go back to that childhood <laughs> where uh, where I was taught about he is uh, your deliverer. He can deliver you from it all, you know. So when that that was when I was being taught uh, where the hope came from, where the peace came from. So and that's what we're going to do. We're going to start learning where our peace come from. And he, and this thing is is a free gift. It, it have you ever felt very good giving a gift? Uh, well, you'll feel even better receiving a gift. And after you receive this gift, you spread, you share the gift. It's a free given gift, and we can share it. And that gift is Jesus Christ. And uh, we're going to start going into the Word of God. First uh, Peter 1 and 2 uh, teaches us that there is uh, grace and peace and it is multiplied. When we serve the living God, we have uh, our peace multiplied. Our hope. Our peace, our joy, our safety is multiplied. It is multiplied. There is hope. It's multiplied. Okay. Uh, when, in verse uh, 13. It says, For the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. See, it is brought to us. It was brought down from from the lights of heaven, from Jesus. I mean, from God. He brought the light, and the Jesus is that light. We can read Ephesians chapter 2. And if you ain't got your Bible, I be I am very, that's why I'm on here, is some people, they don't even have a Bible. They don't. And that, that's very hurtful to know that there's a lot of people that don't even have one. You know, and I'm here. I read it to you, okay? And you can believe uh, the words I say. Because um, if you want to write these scriptures down, you can also look these scriptures back up on, on the internet, too. Uh, Ephesians. I'm trying to find Ephesians. You know, sometimes these scriptures are hard to find at the drop of a hat. I had, I didn't get the, I didn't even have time to even write these down. It was, this was, uh, gave to me to, in a hurry to figure out where our hope and peace and safety cometh from. Oh, I've passed it up. <laughs> Ephesians. Let's go to chapter 2. Verses 4 through 18. And I'll read that to you. So this is the King James Version. What I read out of. According as he. Hath chosen us in him. Before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy. And without blame before him in love. He wants us to have that love. We, he wants us to share love like him. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children 
by Jesus Christ to himself. He wanted us to be to himself. He wanted us to be adopted. We are the adopted because we are the Gentiles to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace. Worth in he hath made us accepted in the beloved. And Jesus is that beloved. And it's his grace that we are saved. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of, gra of his grace. It's through his blood that we are forgiven in sins. Wherein he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed it in himself, that in the dispensation, the fullness of, the, of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ about which are which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him in whom also we have obtained an inheritance see this is an inheritance we inherited it being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will Verse 18. We have to go to 18. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom ye, ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed it, ye were sealed it with that holy spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the re the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory wherefore i also after i heard of your faith in the lord jesus and love unto all saints cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know that what you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his, of his inheritance. In the saints. What I was trying to get at. That whole big scripture. Was. That. This is a gift. Of, of God. And that the. That Christ's grace. We are saved. Through faith. He is our gift from God. And we were in the world with no hope without God. It's by faith. And faith is believing. Is through. Is for our salvation. See. It's for our salvation. Is faith. Is for our salvation. Okay. And um. James chapter 1 verse 17 says it's a gift from above from the Father. A gift. It's a free gift. Romans chapter 5 verse 15 through 21. It's a free gift. Jesus is that free gift of righteousness which is through. We have eternal life. And that eternal life is a gift. And that eternal life is our is what we'll have if we have salvation if we have that faith in Jesus you know it's a it's a hard thing to please God without without faith 
You know, First Peter chapter 1, verse 5 says, Our faith is unto salvation. And if I read on to 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, it says it talks about faith, hope, and charity. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Being not conformed to this world. So he don't want us to be conformed to this world. And he does not want us to be conformed to this world. That means he wants us to be justified. Titus, T-I-T-U-S, Titus, chapter 3. Now, he's hard to find sometimes. Chapter Titus. Let's go to Titus. If you can find it. If you got your Bible, you can find it. You can read Titus. Chapter 3. 3. Verse 7. That being justified by His grace, we should be, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. See, hope is a substance of things not seen. We can have hope for that eternal life. And that's what that's a promise that we have got. And that's a gift. We'll have that eternal life. And that's hope. If we have hope, not something things that we're not even seen. It's a gift that we've not even seen yet. It's something we've not seen. It's something that's hoped for. And that hope is in, in is in Jesus Christ. And if we have this hope, we have peace. We have peace, safety, love, and salvation. And but we got to believe in him, don't we? And uh Romans chapter eight. Chapter eight, Romans. Verse 24, 8, Romans chapter 24, says, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope for. What a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? That's just so plain and simple. Second Corinthians chapter 5, Second Corinthians chapter five. Okay. Verse seven. For we walk by faith and not by sight. See, it's something that's not even seen. We cannot see in heaven. We don't see that that uh, multiples. Multiples, abundance of love, abundance of peace, abundance of joy, of long life, eternal life for eternity. That new body, a body that will never be sick, that will never die. That's what I, I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that, that there will be no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more sadness. And uh, he, Hebrew chapter 11, chapter 11, Hebrew says, verse 6, 6, I mean, no, chapter 1, 11, chapter, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. He's good reading, isn't it? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, things not seen. I got written down here. See, there was this rich man, 
if we want to know how to get to heaven, listen to what this rich man said. He said the rich man, he died, he had a lot of wealth. He wondered how he could have this eternal life. He thought it, it was easy. If we go to Mark chapter 10, I want you to know that we need to be saved. Chapter 10, verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled into him and asked him, Good Master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now, the, now remember this guy, he was wealthy. And here's what he, Jesus told him. <laughs> verse 18. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Verse 19. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Verse 21, Then Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have a treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. Let me read, read on for you. And he said, and he was sad, that rich man was sad because he was wealthy. At, and he was sad at that saying and went away grieved. For he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around about and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? If you go down to 24, and the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. It's very hard because he had plenty of riches, he did. But you know that uh, that the Lord really made it simple and easy for us to be saved. It's just believing in him and having faith. Asking him into your heart and save you and go get baptized. And live a good, clean, wholesome life. Because chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 24, Romans said that we can be called the children of God. John chapter 1, verse 12 says, Believe in Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, gave you, it will give you the power to become the sons of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 7 by faith and we we can have faith in Jesus and it's but it's not by sight because chapter Hebrew chapter 11 verse 1 says faith is the substance of things hoped for and things not seen there was there was it that rich man and I was hoping that we I'd get to understand give you an understanding of that rich man because he had so much wealth what do you have to give up the only thing we have to give up is sin is that your wealth is sin your wealth okay let me go on down the page here
We have to follow Jesus for our salvation. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. I want to start at 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison Awakened out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed it himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called it for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized. He and all his, his straight way. See, you, be, you believe in the Lord Jesus. Believe in him. And be baptized. And you shall be saved. You've got to confess, though. And, uh... But without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's in Hebrew. And John 3.16 is where I need to go now. John 3.16. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life that's it that's a that's a gift and the lord gives it to us abundantly it's his everlasting life see jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly a complete life a full a purpose is if we go that's John 10 and 10. It's full of purpose. Let me go to John 10 and 10 for you real fast. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, that I am come that they might have life, and that they might they might have it more abundantly. Jesus came to for us to have it more abundantly. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, 23, go down to verse 23, we, are, we have all done, though, um, thought, we have all done and thought bad things. But the Bible calls it sin. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Go to Romans chapter 3 and 23. Now it was written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that was raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. We was delivered for our offenses. He was delivered for us. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justifications. Okay. The results of sin is death. 
spiritual separation from God. Romans, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter... No wonder I was reading the wrong chapter there, wasn't I? Romans chapter 6. I had it there. 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is a gift of God. Everlasting life is the gift. The good news is God sent his son Jesus to die for your sins. Jesus died in our place so we could have a relationship with God and be with him forever. Romans 5 and 8. Verse 5 and verse 8. Chapter 5 and verse 8. For God commendeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Christ died for us, I mean. <laughs> Can't see today. God demonstrates his, his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But it didn't end with his death on the cross. He rose again and still lives. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Go to Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians. I like to have scripture to back up what I, read, what I talk about. 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received it, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. See, that's what I wanted to read it to you after I wrote, read it off the book. I read it to you out of the Bible. Jesus is the only way to God. Jesus said, in John chapter 14, verse 6, he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. I mean, through me. So, that is the way to have hope. And it's in Jesus Christ. And gra his grace is free. It's a free gift. So, after you receive this free gift, we need to tell others about the free gift. Because he has it more abundantly than it's so much that we can share it. And so we have that grace that we will have that eternal life in heaven after with something we ain't seen. So it's you have to have, have faith and believe. It's something that you can't see. So until then, until then we get our eternal life, a new body in Christ. And I thank you for watching my video. And that is the grace and the hope through Jesus Christ that I believe in. And that's what has brought me so far. So, And with my hope and peace and love and safety. And the Lord gives it all to us abundantly. Thank you for watching.